Hello, my name is Joakim Åklund from Sweden and you're watching Trucky Josh Vlogs. Good morning, you fine, beautiful people. It's Monday. Can you believe it? Another week is here. Yes! We've got another load of these uh, plastic rolls going down to Wapin, North Dakota. Keeping us busy. I like it. I'm going to go grab some Tims and we'll be on our way. One thing about these W900s, now this isn't a complaint because you can't complain about a W900. That will end you up in hell. <laughs> that, uh, can't even say that with a straight face. Uh, one thing I can uh, say I don't really appreciate in the design is that these uh, power outlets are behind the cup holders in the middle. So, I mean, when you have like two coffees in your cup holders here, it kind of uh, messes with your wiring and stuff, and you got all these wires hanging down here all the time. This radio in here I need to replace so that I can connect with Bluetooth, but right now I still have to connect with an auxiliary cable. So I have an extra few wires hanging around here and uh, it, it messes with my mind sometimes. I don't like all that, uh, that, that look, the messy look, but what can you do? What can you do, right? Just one thing I could say is, eh, they could have put like an outlet on here, like on the side here or down here. Would have been nice to have one up here for the GPS somewhere on the dash, but this is a 2008. You gotta remember that. So in 2008, there wasn't very many outlets in any trucks. The new trucks, they got a power outlet in every corner and every, everywhere you can reach there's a power outlet and they have actual plugins, like a household plugin too. But you know, to be an old school trucker in an old school truck, you gotta make some of those sacrifices. You can't have all of the technologies and all of the fun stuff, but uh, you get the real fun stuff. You get to drive a nice old truck. I like the old ones better than the new ones. So I wouldn't trade it in for those, just for those plugs. I could probably add them in. I wanted to. It's beautiful fall morning. All right, what's the correct word? It's a beautiful autumn morning. I feel so proper when I call it autumn. Autumn. No, it's fall because leaves fall down. good day it's gonna be a good week too yeah. so this week uh, this last Saturday Britt reached the uh, 14 week mark she's 14 weeks pregnant that's a little under I think next weekend is three and a half months pregnant so we're uh, over a third of the way there if you're new here uh, my wife is having our first baby, an IVF baby. It's due on my birthday, April 1st. Wouldn't that be cool? Share my birthday with that? That'd be the best birthday present ever. We don't know if it's gonna be a boy or a girl, we're not gonna find out either. I'm an old school trucker and I'm old school that way too. My wife was on the same page with that, surprisingly. I'm, I'm glad she was. Very few surprises in life. I don't get a surprise if it's a boy or girl. We have a sneaky feeling it's gonna be a girl, but if it comes out a boy, that's awesome too. I just hope they're healthy. Get onto the road here. Monday morning rush hour in Carmen. 
Carmen, Manitoba is in uh, southern Manitoba. Obviously just north of uh, eastern North Dakota. stop of the day after we're loaded. Can you see it? Timmy's. So what does a trucker Josh Timmy's breakfast look like? Let me tell you, it's magical. There is a sausage biscuit, home style sausage biscuit, and a hash brown in here. It's gonna be so good, it's gonna be so good. And here is where the magic is contained. Is an extra large coffee, regular, with two cream and a magical shot of espresso in it. That's what makes it magical, it's the espresso shot. If I'm feeling super magical, I might put two in there. Not too often, but every now and then when I need a bit of a kick in the pants, I'll put two in there. It doesn't have to be an extra large coffee either, but if it's an extra large, it has to have two cream, no sugar. Sugar ruins coffee, it's disgusting. If I don't need so much coffee, I get a large coffee with one cream. That's it though. And the espresso shot, don't forget the espresso shot. Because unfortunately, Tim Horton's coffee is pretty weak. And if you don't add that espresso shot, you're just getting coffee flavored water. <laughs> In my humble opinion, I like my coffee to kick me in the back end, you know? I like feeling alive. That's what I like. I want to change my shades. I want to put my shades on. So, I have these prescription shades, right? I've told you before. I'm trying so hard not to get my glasses dirty, but it's, they're always dirty. My wife warned me about that because she's worn glasses a long time. And I just got my glasses like a month ago. And, uh, yeah, she told me they'll always be dirty. It'll give you something to complain about. She didn't say that, but. She was thinking it. Because <laughs> I was thinking it. I'm like, oh, I got something new to complain about. Awesome. It's God. Uh, that, that's awesome. So here's my uh, prescription shades. Not exactly the cleanest. Oh, oh yeah. I'm so glad we went with the shades. Because <clears throat> we bought one pair, we got a second pair free, right? Uh, and I decided to go with a pair of shades, which was, thank goodness. Because I use these all day on the road. All day. Time to get going. Off to Wapton. Wapty Wapton. See if I can get myself turned around here now. Gotta go around the back. It's kind of tough to get in here sometimes because Tim Hortons is here and it's always very busy. Amazon Prime coming through. That's gonna be our house one day. You need special licenses and permits to, uh, to pull that kind of stuff. I won't be able to do it myself. I'm gonna leave that to the professionals who uh, know what they're doing when they're pulling houses down the road. I've never done that before, so I don't want to go and uh, start pulling my house down the road and risk something. That's my house. It's going to cost me a lot of money. I'm just going to pay for someone to bring it there for me so that I can just, you know, follow them in my pickup truck. I'm going to get some good footage of it, don't worry. 
I'll get better footage of it if I'm not actually pulling it anyways, right? But yeah, we're, uh, we're buying an RTM for our land. Not anytime soon, don't get too excited. First we're building our shop on the land and then we're uh, doing the house. I'm hoping, the goal is my, my, my red line, my hard line is by summer 2027, I wanna be living in the house on our land. That is, that is my, uh, I don't know if you wanna say my goal or my, the latest I want it. Hopefully within the next couple of years we can get it done. And then it's gonna be built in Winnipeg, put together, and then it's gonna be pulled from there all the way out to our land in the bush. I can't wait, I can't wait, you know? I'm not quite as excited for the house as I am for our, the birth of our first child, but uh, I'm pretty excited for the house too. You know, it's gonna be like the second coolest day in this decade. I gotta be careful here, wait a second, wait a second. There's my wedding day. There's my wedding day too. Let's not <laughs> Third coolest day of the decade. Whatever, you know, it's gonna be one of those big life moments, because this is gonna be the house we wanna live in the rest of our lives, right, we wanna retire in there. We might own some other properties and rent them out, but uh, this house is gonna be ours. We're, we're building it for us. So it's gonna be a big moment in life when that house rolls down the highway to our land and gets set on the foundation and get all the, the electricity, the plumbing hooked up. Ugh. What a day that's gonna be. Every time I see an RTM going down the down the highway like that, I get all excited. Like, one day, one day that's gonna be our house. And the reason we're going with an RTM, RTM stands for ready to move. It gets built on site in Winnipeg and then gets moved to our site where we're gonna place it. It's cheaper that way, for one, because I don't have to pay for the builders and the crews to go back and forth between our land, which is way out in the middle of nowhere in the bush, and wherever they're based. It gets built right there, saves all of that commuting time. I gotta pay for that commuting time. So it's cheaper that way. And they're also built stronger, usually. And in this case, the one that we're going with, is it's built a lot stronger, it's built to move, right? If I build it on site, like not only is there the commuting time of the, the crews going back and forth from wherever they're based to the city, or I mean from the city probably to my land, I mean I've also got to get all the product delivered to my land then as well. Whereas if they build it in Winnipeg on their site, all of the materials they need are right there. Everything they need, all their tools, everything is right there. It gets built a lot faster. So they'll build it, move it set it up for us, get it all hooked up. And then once we're moved in, then for me begins the fun part for me, landscaping our yard. We're gonna have a nice front yard, no dogs allowed in the front yard, they're gonna be in the back. Gonna get a flagpole again. I missed my flagpole from our old property. Maybe I'll get a couple, I don't know, I'll have at least one. I want a big one. Bunch of flower gardens, flower beds in the front. Gonna build a nice garden to grow our vegetables and stuff. Build a nice fence around it so the deer stay out of it. Build a nice like living area in the back. Or not a living area, but like a, a family area in the back with a bonfire pit. Oh, it's gonna be good. I can't wait. I'm getting impatient. Uh, I wanna, I wanna start building now. I really want the foundation for our shop in the ground next summer. But I mean, there's a few things we need to do to the house we're in right now first. One of our windows on our house that we're in now, our little house, is cracked. It's broken. We're getting that replaced uh, next month. I, I just paid for it or paid for the down payment. So we're getting a new window installed in the house. That needs to be done first. Uh, we've got a new hot water tank in there now. That's done. New washer and dryer. That's done. We need to redo the bathroom. That's another big one that we need to do before we uh, get going on our property. So 
we'll get the the bathroom redone. I'd like to update the kitchen. Depends, right? Because we might keep the property as a rental property. That's that's probably what we're going to do. When I have an asset like a house, I really don't want to sell it if I don't have to. I'd rather, you know, get some renters, some good renters that, that are good, that won't destroy the house. Get some good renters in there. And then you're providing a home for somebody. And also, you keep your asset. And that keeps growing for you. And then down the road somewhere, whenever we need the cash or whenever we want to retire, then we can sell it and have a chunk, chunk of cash, right? And in the meantime, our tenants are paying for our mortgage and they're paying for our investment. It's like forced savings. We take the rent from them, we put it into an account, pay our mortgage, pay off the house. And then in the meantime, we can, uh, we can live in the house that we're building, right? I might buy a few more properties uh, in the next couple of decades throughout my life. I'd like to have uh, several properties lined up and, you know, hopefully paid off, good tenants, so that uh, one day when I'm ready to retire, I can sell off my assets, all my houses, cash in on that, and, uh, you know, go sit on a beach in Florida. Speaking of Florida, how are you guys doing down there? I've been watching the news. I've been keeping up with uh, the devastation down there from the, from the hurricane. Also on the east coast of Canada, Hurricane Fiona hit up there and Hurricane Ian hit in Florida and South Carolina. How are you guys doing? All along our east coast, Canada, the US. You guys doing all right? Let me know down below in the comments uh, if, you were, uh, if you were caught in that storm. How are you doing? I hope you're doing good. I hope you're, uh, uh, I hope you're doing as good as you can be given the situation thinking about you guys. film anything he had it off the trailer so fast I'm getting pretty fast at uh, getting straps off and put away too we're done I think that's a record 16 minutes from the time I stopped to the time I'm rolling away right now 16 minutes Ooh. I like that let's go get another one I'm not completely positive but I, I think we're doing another one tomorrow that's where I'm headed right now, anyway. Unless plans get changed on the way. I'm going to stop in Fargo for fuel. And if I haven't heard anything by then, I'll call in. I brought some walking shoes this week as well. Better shoes for my feet. 
I'm thinking of getting back to Carmen as fast as I can and then doing my walk there. I'll see how that works. I don't know if I'll like that as much. I usually like to walk during the day. By the time we get back to Carmen, it'll be the evening. Hopefully it's not too cold already. Whatever. You walk and you warm yourself up, right? At least there's no bugs this time of year. All the mosquitoes have wonderfully died. Hopefully. Never to be seen again. the Canadian border here. All trucks, commercial vehicles, next right. It should say keep right. But yeah, same thing, I guess. Keep right would make a little more sense. In 600 meters, slide right on. Lord Selkirk Highway, Highway 29 and then keep to the right of 1.4 kilometers. If you come to this border crossing uh, in the middle of the night, just a heads up, this sign will say closed. Kind of freaked me out when it did last time. Uh, you gotta go through the car side then. They just have one window open then for cars and trucks. So you gotta keep left. Really freaked me out. I think it was, it was a few weeks ago. I crossed here at like three in the morning and I'd never seen it closed before because commercial vehicles always keep to the right and uh, personal vehicles, you go to the left and there's two different like, buildings almost. It's all part of the same building, but two separate areas that we cross. Apparently, when it gets really slow, I guess it makes sense. They only have one window open over there on the left for everybody. So I thought the border was closed. I was freaking out. Like, this border doesn't close. This is the Pembina Emerson border crossing. It's open 24 seven. Why would it close? Then I'm thinking, what happened? Like, were we attacked or something? Was there like a military attack somewhere? And why else would they close the border? Another pandemic? <laughs> I know the border was uh, still open. I figured it out after I saw another truck go through there who obviously knew what he was doing. Just followed him through the, the side there with the cars and asked him, yeah, apparently in the middle of the night they shut down the commercial side, I guess, to save on workers. I don't know. I don't know. It was a good run, though. It was a good run down to Wapton. Oh, we're going to do the same thing again tomorrow. I've got my load off for here already. Let me pull it up here. I believe we're going to Wapton, not Buxton. It's one or the other. Uh, come on, show me my load assignment. Yeah, Wapton, North Dakota. Wapton. 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 Cool whip in Wapton. No? So I'm gonna go to Carmen again tonight and sleep there. And we'll be ready first thing in the morning again. I'll show you what I was talking about here. On the right here, there's three lanes for commercial vehicles. There's usually just one or two open, unless it gets really, really busy. On the left over there, that's where all the cars usually go. That's used to be where we all went, and then they built this side for us. Here you just stop here, you wait for this light above here to turn green. Uh, they'll turn it green when they're ready for you to come up behind them. Oh, see, I got the green light already. If they're doing a shift change or something at the border, uh, sometimes they'll leave those lights back there red so that all traffic stays well back from here so that they can switch out customs agents or whatever or do a, do a shift change. Then when they're ready for you, they'll turn the lights green again. Then you come up to the window here. If you don't get a green light there, don't come through that red light. They really don't like that. Wait for the light to turn green. Sometimes it feels like the, uh, the the lights aren't working. You're wondering, why do I got a red light? I'm sitting here, there's no one in front of me, it's not turning green. They're working. They're working just fine, believe me. It doesn't have to make sense to you, but when they're ready for you to come to the window, they'll turn it green. 
Otherwise, you might get yelled at, you might get pulled in for a search, you might get an extra little hassle that you don't need, that you don't want. They're gonna wanna know, why did he run through a red light? Maybe there's a charge connected to that, you know? You run through a red light and he was also charged, right? Another day is done. And I know these days aren't as exciting to show you uh, online here. Uh, when I'm doing the same thing day after day. Uh, I'll, I'll find ways of making it interesting. I might be doing this all week yet. I don't know. I know I'm doing it tomorrow again. We'll go day by day to see how it goes. But by the sounds of it, I have a feeling I'll probably be doing this all week yet. And maybe even parts of next week. It's a really good run for me. Uh, works out really well. So I'm happy with it. I've just got to find a way of making it interesting to show you what I'm doing every day uh, when I'm doing the same thing. This won't be forever. Uh, what we're doing right now, we're running all this pipe down south. They need to get it into the ground before the ground freezes. So once winter hits, this is going to slow down and I'll be doing different stuff again. So for now, I'm just going to, you know, pound away at this route as much as they'll let me. I, re I really like it. I'm happy with it. So... Who knows how, how long uh, I'm going to be doing this for. But it'll definitely not be longer than fall time. Because once winter hits, I'm sure we'll have other things to do. Because uh, they can't put any of this pipe in the ground after after that. So uh, I'm not on that side of things. I don't work in the office. I'm not in sales. I'm a driver. The, uh, my end of it is I just do... I, I deliver the loads that I'm sent. And... Uh, I mean, as long as I'm happy with them, and like I've said over and over, I am happy with this road. I want to do this. So on YouTube here, we're going to find different ways of making it interesting and uh, different things to show you every day. But I mean, this is Manitoba in North Dakota. So uh... <laughs> you see my challenge. I'm going to try hard, though, guys. Thanks for hanging out with me here, though. I, I appreciate it. Thanks for hanging out with me all the way to the end. And... Uh... We'll see what happens tomorrow. It's Monday night. It is October 3rd, 2022. When I'm filming this, I'll see you in the morning.